Yo, what's up folks? So do you guys want to know where I live? I'm gonna show you. And that, my friends, is my home. All right, folks, in today's video, I'll be answering some of your Q&A questions. But I don't think this is the right spot to do this. So let's get out of here. All right, so let's start with our first question. Abai Choudhury, I hope I said that right. Please tell us how you started your filmmaking journey and about your first paid work. So the first camera I started filming with uh, was the GoPro. I used it to record all of my breakdance sessions and to see how I progressed. Later on, I used the GoPro to record my travel videos. Now, I wasn't so happy with the wide angle of the GoPro and I wanted more versatility. So I upgraded to the Canon 80D and I had a kit lens on it that was able to zoom in and out to just have different focal lengths. And with that camera, I started to film my first uh, paid projects. Now, when you're starting out, you do videos for free just to gain experience. But the video I did for a friend, he actually paid me on his own will, which was cool. And from that point on, I realized, hey, you can make money doing videos. The next question is by Will Benaida. I would like to know how old you are. I'm actually 29 years old, but because I'm half Asian, you might think I look like 21, which is good. So the next question is from Daniel Thomas. Can you say something in Swiss German or do a video in Swiss German? Now, if you scroll back to some of my older videos, I actually have a couple videos done in Swiss German, which are more like comedy sketches. But for the future of this channel, I will keep it in English since I want to reach a bigger audience. The next question is by Gentile Gaming. What's your favorite b-boy move? So you really want to see my favorite b-boy move. Yeah, you've seen it. It's the windmill. Windmill is like riding a bicycle. I used to do hand hops, flare, 2000, elbow tracks. But since I stopped breakdancing for almost two years now, maybe in the future I will combine my channel with, you know, with dancing. But at the moment, I will leave it how it is. Next question is by official Tyler Smith. New to making videos and using my iPhone, should I buy accessories or save for a DSLR camera? Well, since you have already a smartphone with a camera, you should probably start out filming videos with your smartphone since it comes for free. Now, once you're comfortable with using your smartphone to make videos, then I would recommend you to upgrade to a larger camera. Start filming with a professional video app like Filmic Pro, where you have full control over ISO, shutter speed, focus, exposure, white balance. Once you're comfortable with learning all of these things, it's much easier for you to upgrade to a camera and use it right away. A big advantage of using a smartphone over a DSLR camera is that the accessories are much cheaper. So you could buy a gimbal like the DJI OM4 for like 160 bucks, whereas like the DJI Ronin S will cost you like almost $500. So if you have the money, you could upgrade to a camera, but if you're low on budget, then just start out filming with your smartphone. Most people won't notice it anyways if you know what you're doing and know how to film with your smartphone since most of the people will be watching that video on their tiny phone screen. Next question is by Alex Salutem. Are you still single? My friend, I do have a beautiful girlfriend at home, but you know what? I get a lot of comments from people saying that I'm cute. I'm not cute, I'm sexy. The next question is by Jay Sonajo Ramos. Tips how to make more cinematic shots using mobile phone. So I got five tips for you. First of all, use a professional video app like Filmic Pro. This will just give you more control over your camera. My second tip is to shoot in 4K if your device allows it. 4K is a much higher resolution than 1080p. And if you downsample 4K into a 1080p clip, the image is much more sharper and clearer. My third tip would be to set your shutter speed double your frame rate. So if you shoot 4K 24 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be one over 50 of a second. 
This way you will get that natural or filmic motion blur that you see in Hollywood movies. And my fourth tip is to lock your exposure. You don't want your exposure to constantly change during shooting. That will certainly ruin your video. My fifth tip is to use a stabilizer. When you're filming an action scene, for example, then you might want to film handheld and get that uh, shaky movement in your video. But generally speaking, you want to have your footage as smooth as possible. And if you're not good at shooting handheld or you, maybe you have an older smartphone that doesn't have good image stabilization, you want to consider getting a gimbal to really smoothen out those shots. The next question is from Belvi. How do you structure your videos? Do you have a plan or upload random videos? All my videos are structured. So I start out with an idea and I research that idea using TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy is an extended tool that you can use to search for titles that might rank high on YouTube. And once I have that idea and think that this video will do well on my channel, I then go over to writing a script. And this script is also structured. I have an introduction, I have the bodywork and a conclusion in the end. So right now I'm not using a teleprompter or a script. These are all my natural answers to you. I script most of my videos, especially when it gets really technical. This way I can also stay focused on the topic. So once I'm done with the script, I go to the filming part where I shoot the A-roll. Usually I do that in my studio, but if it's nice outside, I usually do it like I'm doing it right now. And then comes the B-roll. I usually write out the B-rolls that I need. Uh, B-roll is basically a secondary footage that you put on top of your primary video to help tell the story better. Once I'm done filming everything, I edit it in Final Cut Pro X, which is a professional editing software. And then last, I have to publish the video, do some social media marketing. I post it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter to allow people to come to my channel and watch the video. So it takes around one week for me to create a video, but it really depends on the topic. If it's an in-depth review, it will take me a week, but for a video like this, where the edit is not too complex, this takes me around three days. So the last question comes from Jericho Ryan Merjares Laza. Benek Razor, I want to pursue this passion of making videos and want to make it a career, but I don't know where to start. Any advice? My biggest advice to you is to go out with whatever camera you have and start shooting. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. I started out with a GoPro and it took me years, you know, to get better at filmmaking, but I believe you can do that too. Another great tip is to join Facebook groups where you can post your video in that group and get feedback from other members. I also recommend you doing projects for free, especially if you're starting out. That is what I did. This is the best way to, you know, learn the business side of filmmaking and learning how to communicate with your client and also get to know what your value is. And trust me, as you go and create those videos for clients or for yourself, you will get better at filmmaking. I mean, if I look at my older videos from YouTube, it looks horrible, but it's nice to see how I improved over time. And I really strongly believe that you can do that too. So really get out, shoot with whatever camera you have and publish your story with the world. All right, guys, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. This way I can create more awesome videos for you guys. Until then, see you soon and take care.